The first one that came to my mind was Jonathan Edwards, a divine and spiritual light immediately imparted to the soul. Um, it's, a, it's an exposition of um, Matthew 16, 17, flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. But really, the reason that it made the impact it did is because it's more of an exposition of 2 Corinthians 4, uh, 4 to 6, the God of this age has blinded the minds of unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of uh, Christ, who is the image of God. So that it, it, it confirmed in my early days this emerging conviction about the sovereignty of God in salvation by making so clear that what really happens in conversion is that a blind person is given divine and supernatural light. I mean, that's how we got saved. Once our hearts were finding nothing beautiful in Jesus, nothing attractive in Jesus, and then one day he's everything to us. How does that happen? And Edwards, in a magnificent way, in that sermon unfolds not only verse 4, which is the blindness, but, but then the solution in verse 6 where it says... Um, the God who said, let light shine out of darkness, has shone into our heart to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Christ. And if you stop and think about it, what, what is that? The eyes of your hearts being enlightened to see new light, spiritual light. And it's, it's, a, it's a magnificent, beautiful miracle that we need to explain to our people if we're pastors and that we need to have tasted. So that, that was just a, a magnificent experience to uh, encounter such a beautiful description of what happened to me when I couldn't even remember it. <laughs> he taught me, the Bible taught me through Edwards how I got saved, and that, that text was, was the the key one even to this day. It's probably more seminal in the way I think about my, my theology and how I believe the Bible is true and what I believe about conversion and how I preach th than any other text. But hey, that's probably enough. I, I've got another sermon, but we'll, we'll see. I, I want to hear what, <laughs> what HP says. Yeah, I think in my own life and walk with the Lord, God regularly over the years meets me through text, through people he brings into my life, through books, but also through sermons. And so like Dr. Piper said, it's hard to narrow. But hearing the question, what came to my mind among several marking points for me was the week I turned 18 years old, I am a young, a very, very young pastor hmm. as a teenager, and I have a guest in town, and he tells me, as uh, <clears throat> we're writing to his hotel, that E.K. Bailey is in town. And he asked, could we go hear him the next day in the middle of the day? And I didn't know who E.K. Bailey was, a pastor from Dallas, Texas. And we went, and that sermon marked me in two ways. First of all, it was in Joshua. It was the aftermath of the defeated AI the message was called Reclaiming Lost Ground. And just as a young man, a young minister, a new pastor, just the warning of sin, the importance of obedience, and the picture of grace that uh, he preached there, God just used to impact me. Secondly, it was the first time I had heard in, in my cultural setting and upbringing, expositional preaching. Mm. I had been reading books on expositional preaching, but I had not seen it done in the setting that I grew up in. And it was the first, I didn't even know what to call it. He just, what I remember thinking about that was that he, expl he explained the text. His novel is that mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> he was just explaining the yep. text. Yep. 
And I walked out of the room and I said to the people with me, I don't know what that was, but whatever that was, I want to commit the rest of my life Amen. to it. Amen. And so the message itself, God used as a young minister to challenge me to, to live obediently. And at the same time, God used that to seal the deal that expositional preaching mm. was the right way to handle mm. God's Word. Mm. And it, mm. that sermon still affects me in both ways to this mm. day. Mm. Mm. I, you know, while you were talking, yeah. I thought of a totally different sermon. <laughs> <laughs> than the one I had in mind because because of, of your age. When you said 18, did you say? Yes, sir. So I'm 20 years old. It's Wheaton College. I've got mononucleosis in the hospital three weeks on my way to being a doctor, a medical doctor. Huh. And I had to drop organic chemistry because I'm in the hospital for three weeks. The radio beside me is giving the sermons from Harold John Ockengay, 200 yards away in, in, uh, ch in the chapel, Edmund Chapel. And I'm sitting there, listen, having that experience. I'm watching him handle the word. Yeah. I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm hearing it. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm watching, hearing him handle the word, and everything in me said, I want to do that. <laughs> I, I, I don't know if I can preach. I don't know if I can teach. I just want to know the word and handle the word like that. And my, my whole life turned around. I thank God for mononucleosis and wow. three weeks in the hospital yeah. and having to drop organic chemistry and having Harold John Ockengate. And I don't remember the text. I don't remember anything except I would love to handle the word yeah. like that. So pr preaching begets preachers. Mm. <laughs> it does. <laughs>